हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल लर्न अबाउट क्लॉसियस क्लैपिरॉन इक्वेशन ओके सो बिफोर टेलिंग यू अबाउट व्हाट एग्जैक्टली द क्लॉसियस क्लैपिरॉन इक्वेशन इज वी हैव टू लर्न दीज फ्यू थिंग्स because without learning these few things we cannot understand what actually the clausius clapeyron equation is the first thing is that liquids does not have any fixed boiling point or saturation temperature the boiling point of a particular liquid depends upon the pressure applied over it what does it means that if i ask you that what is the boiling point of water your answer might be 100 degree centigrade but actually 100 degree centigrade is the boiling point of water only in case the pressure applied over water is 1 bar in case we change the pressure the boiling point also changes you can see over here i have some data with me that at 1 bar pressure the boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade at 2 bar pressure the boiling point is 121 degree centigrade and at 5 bar pressure the boiling point is 150 degree centigrade not only with water for all liquids one more data i am having that is for ammonia for one bar pressure in case of ammonia the boiling point is minus 33 degree centigrade in case the pressure over ammonia is 20 bar the boiling point is 50 degree centigrade okay it means that liquids does not have any fixed boiling point it depends upon the pressure applied over them and one more thing is that with rise in pressure the magnitude of saturation temperature or boiling point also rises you can see that when the pressure of water is rising the boiling point is also rising it is like this the second thing you must keep in your mind is that the specific volume of vapor once a liquid converts into vapor the specific volume of vapor is very high compared to that of the corresponding liquid's specific volume for example at one bar pressure the liquid water's specific volume is 0.001 meter cube per kg means 1 kg of liquid water would attain 0.001 meter cube of volume but in case the same water converts into vapor at one bar pressure then the specific volume becomes 1.69 meter cube per kg you can see the difference the difference is almost 1600 times compared to that of liquid water the specific volume of um, water vapor is 1600 times more you can see you can compare it okay so specific volume of vapor is very high compared to that of corresponding its liquid form the third thing you must keep in your mind is that there is a critical pressure and critical pressure is the pressure at which a liquid does not have two distinct phases it means that there is a maximum pressure beyond which the liquid cannot be transformed into vapor means the two phases merges with each other it is called as critical pressure for example for the case of water the critical pressure is 225 bars means beyond 225 bars in case we want to convert the liquid water into vapor then it cannot be possible because beyond critical pressure two does two distinct phases of liquid that is liquid and vapor phase doesn't exist so we have learned three things those those are that liquid does not have any fixed boiling point the boiling point or saturation temperature depends upon the pressure applied over it second thing is that specific volume of vapor is very high as compared to that of specific volume of liquid you can see over here one example i have given third thing is that critical pressure is the pressure beyond that pressure in case we want to convert a liquid into vapor it cannot happen because beyond this pressure the two distinct phases of liquid that is liquid and vapor phases merges with each other there are no dis two distinct phases above this critical pressure now clausius clapeyron equation deals with the change in boiling point of liquid with change in small pressure provided the pressure is far below the critical pressure what does it mean it means that over here we have seen that with rise of pressure the boiling point is changing this is observed data means in the laboratory the experiment is done that at one bar pressure what is the boiling point at two bar pressure what is the boiling point in laboratory the actual experiment is done and that data has been recorded and for the for all the liquids such type of data is available in form of tables okay for water you can find it in steam tables for ammonia you can find it in refrigerant tables like this okay so with change in pressure the boiling point is changing but in case we want a mathematical formula in which in case we are putting the change in pressure we are getting the change in saturation temperature that formula is what clausius clapeyron equation is this equation doesn't gives very accurate answer but 
we can make a rough estimate that in case we are making a small change in pressure over the liquid what would be the change in the boiling point of that liquid like this this is what clausius clapeyron equation is so we have understood that with change in pressure the boiling point is changing but in case we want a mathematical formula in which we are putting the change in pressure and we are getting the change in saturation temperature that formula is what clausius clapeyron equation now why it is said that the pressure must be far below than the critical pressure because beyond the critical pressure there is no existence of two distinct phases so actually the existence of boiling point is only in case the pressure is far below than the critical pressure this is the reason that clausius clapeyron equation is applicable in case the pressure applied over the liquid is far below than the critical pressure now suppose that there is a liquid over which the pressure is p1 and boiling point is t1 at pressure p1 suppose the boiling point is t1 okay so we know this thing that when phase change happens then at boiling point isothermally the latent heat is added to convert the liquid into vapor this we know that latent heat addition is always at constant temperature so at p1 pressure suppose the boiling point is t1 so at t1 temperature when the liquid begins to boil then hfg hfg is the symbol of latent heat hfg is provided so liquid changes into vapor okay now suppose the pressure rises to p2 a small pressure change is subjected to the liquid in that case suppose the boiling point rises to t2 so dp is the small pressure change over the liquid and dt is, is the small saturation temperature change of that liquid now at the pressure p2 also the liquid is is changing into vapor so it would also absorb the latent heat now there might be a question in your mind that in case we are changing the pressure the boiling point is changing and we know this thing that with change in pressure the amount of latent heat addition also changes okay so why in both the cases i am writing hfg over here means why i am keeping the latent heat remains same for the case the pressure is changing boiling point is changing but the amount of latent heat addition is still kept same the reason is that for little pressure change however the amount of latent heat addition for change of phase increases but the increment in the latent heat addition is so small due to which we can disregard that change so we can consider that in case the pressure over the liquid is p1 and boiling point is t1 in case the pressure rises to p2 is small a little pressure change is taking place then the amount of latent heat required for phase change remains same only there is change in saturation temperature so dp is the change in pressure and dt is the change in saturation temperature okay one more thing we know that change in entropy ds is given by del q by t del q by t del q is the amount of heat addition and t is the temperature so heat added at constant temperature this ratio is called as entropy change over here when we are adding this latent heat then it is also added at constant temperature because we know this thing that phase change operation happens always at constant temperature so in place of del q in case i am writing hfg so hfg by t is also equals to ds so hfg can be written as tds okay so let's summarize that p1 is the pressure over the liquid at that pressure t1 is the saturation temperature or boiling point and hfg is the amount of latent heat which is to be added so that the liquid can change into vapor now in case the pressure changes to p2 then the saturation temperature becomes t2 and almost with same latent heat the liquid changes into vapor almost the same because small pressure change doesn't makes a big amount of latent heat addition for change of phase of liquid now next is by maxwell's equation derived through helmholtz equation del p by del t at constant v equals to del s by del v at constant t this i am not going to talk about the details how this formula has been arrived there is an another lecture in the same channel in regards of this maxwell equation in case you want to know the details of this expression then you can watch that lecture first of all okay so i am proceeding by this expression that del p by del t at constant volume equals to del s by del v at constant temperature this is the maxwell equation derived through helmholtz equation now we can write it like this dp by dt equals to ds by dv now over the rhs in case i am multiplying t over the numerator and denominator ultimately i am getting t into ds upon t into dv but over the lhs it is dp by dt now tds equals to del q we know this thing 
and dv equals to what change in volume c all this we are doing for phase change so this is the specific volume of vapor when the liquid completely transforms transforms into vapor and this is the specific volume of liquid okay so this is the final volume mass initial volume and tds equals to del q in place of del q we can write hfg because over here we have already proved the hfg equals to tds therefore ultimately our formula becomes dp by dt equals to hfg by tv now why why we are disregarding this vo because i have already told that the specific volume of liquid is very very less than specific volume of corresponding vapor therefore since this vo is the initial volume that is the specific volume of liquid and v is the final volume that is the specific volume of vapor so since the specific volume of vapor is very very high compared to that of specific volume of liquid so we can disregard this do so ultimately our formula simplifies to dp by dt equals to hfg by tv now furthermore in case we are considering the converted vapor as an ideal gas then we know this thing that ideal gas equation equals to pv equals to rt so v can be written as rt by p so in place of v in case i am writing rt by p ultimately what i am getting over here i am writing rt by p dp by dt equals to p hfg upon rt square furthermore in case i am doing cross multiplication then dp by p equals to hfg by r into dt by t square okay dp by p equals to hfg by r dt by t square okay now conducting integration both the sides ultimately what i am getting log p2 by p1 equals to hfg by r 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 this is what clausius clapeyron equation for vaporization is now what is the beauty of this formula see suppose p1 is the pressure initial pressure over the liquid at that pressure t1 is the boiling point now in case pressure rises to p2 however the rising of pressure is very little in that case what would be the change in saturation temperature that can be found by this formula because hfg is a constant and r is also constant so only variables are p2 p1 and t1 t2 so in case we are uh, having initial pressure and initial boiling point in case we are changing the pressure what would be the boiling point that can be found by this clausius clapeyron equation of vaporization so hope you would have understood by this small lecture what is the clausius clapeyron equation and what is its physical significance thank you